My name is Big C, Chris. I'm from the Dubs, East Oakland. Born and raised, you know. You have to understand that the recidivism rate is 70%. It's the block right here, 25th of Footio, man. They hit us all over the place, you know what I'm saying? And they hit the corner on me right here, ran up on me. Police hit these corners, they leaning, you know what I'm saying? And they come, they smashing right up here, jumping out the car, and you got to hit them back fences back there. That means if you stand 10 brothers in a row, seven of them are going back to prison within the first 90 days. This is where I went to prison many times at, not just once, about three, four times. If you do over 10 years in prison, you are compared to a vet, an army veteran that just came out of war, coming back. Now you get out. That's when the real fight starts, because that's where the party started, because you got to figure out how are you going to live. All these things that I went through, I learned from. I give you two hundred dollars. It's sink or swim. I knew that we couldn't do this forever, so I had to prepare myself for something after this. What I didn't know, but I knew that I would have to find out eventually because I couldn't do this forever. Well, actually, when I, um, you know, I came up as a kid, man. We was um, from from the beginning. We was pumping, pumping gas, and and um, you know, we was um, helping people with their groceries, and you know, we was riding around, getting plums off trees, and low walk courts. low courts, and high goes with the pretty young ladies, the pretty girls back in the day when they used to, you know, the pressing comb and all that stuff. <laughs> old school dresses, you know. Um, I come up in the beautiful era, I think it was the 70s, you know? And um, it was a lot of family family orientation, um, a lot of um, love, a lot of black pride. You know, the Panthers had just left the scene. So Oakland was beautiful. We skate around the lake on the weekend. You know, I come from that, man. Um, eventually, you know, when I got older, when I got a little bit older as, a, you know, pre-teens, I used to like hanging out with um, the AC Mile. <laughs> Go hang out on 4851, my cousin Demon Den. Um, you know, we go to the mall. Every, you know, everybody go to the mall. Your mom gives you some um, money to go buy you some G 501 surfers, uh, World Cup surfers, uh, 501s, derby jacket, you know. Hanging with the fellas, you know. Absolutely, and that was the dress code, the derby jacket. And later on in the game, next thing you know, start putting the names on the jacket. Right. Put your hood on where the you jacket. From. Where you were from. Yeah, I, I can, man, I feel that. Oh, hats there. too, man. Yeah, the hats with the little hands on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, was, that was a little later. Back then, um, you know, it was, you see niggas with the sniper hats, with the uh, glasses with no lenses, um, Playboy bunnies, you know, um, uh, Playboy bunnies with the perms and the snipers, you know what I'm saying? So it was it was it was fun, man. I, you know, I grew up on twenty third, so I used to look at um, look at um, Mickey Mo and all them, and and you know them was OGs, and we was just we was kids back then. We we had to we couldn't even walk past there. My mom would whoop our ass if we even walked past the Tony's liquor. So. By sixteen, I was on ninety six. I was um, I was grinding. I was um, grinding, be, and it started way before then. You know, um, around 81, 82, you start hearing about the Powder Boys, Dope Boys, and, and you see your, your, your homie, he got a, a wad of money like this. I'm like, what the, how, how you get all that money? Because actually, we was poor, you know what I'm saying? We come in eating government cheese, mama couldn't pay the rent, Granddaddy and grandfather in there arguing and shit on the first sheet and went to the track and messed off the money. <laughs> so, you know, it, we was we was we was going through it, man. You know, it was a struggle, you know. Um, and you know, we, you can look at the, the the situation that black folks have been going through all throughout the history in America, um, that 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 made that happen, but 
you know, wasn't nobody balling in the 70s, you know what I'm saying, in the 80s, you know. If you was, you had a good job, you was working at General Motors, or you was working at one of these companies, you, um, you went to school, had a college education. Um, but in Oakland, a lot of families were struggling, you know. So um, when we when I seen, when we seen that, you know what I'm saying, and, and um, they got on the flyers, um, clothes and stuff like that, oh, man, you know, we, it, it was a move. It, it just dropped out of nowhere the dope game, and um, you know we had to get into that because you know a lot of us, me and my family, we hung together. You know we was tight. You know what I'm saying. And a lot of us, um, we had like a we was already a crew. You know, so we got together and said we're gonna get do that. You know, that's what we're gonna do. And then look, listening, um, looking at up to Felix Mitchell and uh, Mickey Mo and um, Little Durl, and then, <laughs> we coming. We we trying to get. We trying to be ballers like them, millionaires like them. Man, they said what? Felix bought um, Clark Gable Mansion. Oh man, that's that's that was who we was looking up to. We wanted to be like Fee. Okay, yeah, man. So this is the 25th Apartments, man. Well, we um, set up shop back in the day, long time ago, in the 80s. And um, this fence used to be wo a wooden fence. So when we was grinding, the, the 5-0 couldn't see through the fence. So they, one time they set up a van right here. They just parked the van right here. It was full of police, similar to a white van across the street. But they parked the van, you couldn't see in the van. And whoever opened the door, that's when they would try to hit. But this was wooden. We used to hang out right here. Or we'd be on the second floor looking over. You know what I'm saying? On this, or we'd be on this side looking over, making sure we're walking down the streets. And um, if they hit, we hit the back fences in the back roof back there and go to the other apartments around the corner. Or we had spots up in here where we would go. But if they hit, we wanted to get out of these apartments and hit the um, escape route in the back. So on this whole street, you know, this being 25th, this was the whole block, man. So this was one of the spots that um, I was at. You know, I had a spot right here. That house across the street right there. Upstairs, we had that one. This right here was, um, they, they became the police. They used to watch us. And the Mexican uh, mother, she didn't like us, and the kids became police officers. <laughs> what was it like when you first started? I guess getting on grinding. The side of the law. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> man, niggas was getting high. Man. Wow. <laughs> Two store was rapping right about bass rock cabbies, and niggas was smoking Grammys. You know what I'm saying? And 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 we was grinding at the same time, right? But a lot of that's how a lot of guys in my generation got caught up and became dope addicts. You know what I'm saying? Because they, because they couldn't get out of that. They couldn't get out of that. Um, that that drug use. You know. But some people went through it and went through the stages. And you know, we had rock houses. Used to used to be places where you 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 work for uh, somebody who had a house. And um, he'd pay you to watch out or um, work inside the rock house, and you get paid just like a job. Or on the street, you get um, a certain amount of money for grinding for somebody. And um, eventually, as a as a youngster, we took that education, and we just we stayed in that life. And eventually, we became the the big big guys. You know, this is another spot right here. Where my, my grandma used to stay. And man, this was like 86. It was popping, incredibly popping. It was rolling, I'm talking about really rolling. And um, that's when we first got in the game. And that's where we really basically got our feet wet in this house right here. What used to happen is nothing but cop and blow. And they come in, they, every car came down here was buying some dope. And they used to pop 24-7. I used to fill up my pockets, my front pockets, my back pockets, my jacket pockets, a bag. And we used to um, have a, we used to grind with a stick, a pistol.
pistol and the flashlight. So when you hit the corner, you flash the light. That's where you know where to pull. We didn't want you to pull in front of us because no. we had customers that already knew. Pull over and park. When you hit this corner, pull over and park. Or park around the corner and walk down. You know, so um, they see that light. They see that we who we operating. They pull over and park, and they come get served. Can't have no ones. Can't have no chains. Wow. You know, twenty dollars only. We selling twenties. You know what I'm saying? Later on, it became they start selling tens. But it was twenty dollars only. You didn't have twenty dollars, you get your ass beat. You know. So um, watching that corner, watching that corner, police hit. Shoot, that's the exit right there. Buses pull up. You used to have girls on the bus and shit. You know, they, sometimes they get off. You know what I'm saying? They, everybody was always it was wild. It was, it was popping over here, man. You know, it was popping. And, and, and every day we was going to the mall and get fresh. We go to the mall, go get a new fit, and we go get fresh. You know, so I'm sitting, I'm sitting out here, got the brand new Nikes on, a nice sweatsuit or something, a nice fit, and we fitted out here. And the police, they, they knew what was going on, especially they knew the look of the, the D-Boys. So they was gonna try to jack us, but we was ready, because the bundle is over there or down there. You know what I'm saying? I had a spot right here. Spot there. You know, had a little, little female stayed there. Okay. It's a roll out here. You know, have somebody washing these corners. You have somebody washing the corners both ways. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it just was wild back then, man. It was nothing but grinding. These apartments, we had these apartments right here. It was nothing but strictly grinding going on here. You know, people that lived here, they knew what time it was. It was like, you know, they was under siege because We'd have, um, I'm not gonna say everybody's names, but it was more people than me. And we, we, we had to block, man. It was a million dollar spot over here. So every day was just nonstop traffic coming through this, this corner and coming from that way. You had people coming from Alameda, getting off the bar station. Coming. But only not only that, it was different spots mm -hmm. all around. You know what I'm saying? You had spots up here, spots over there. You know, I'm not gonna say too many people names. Yeah, no, no. You know, yeah. but um, yeah, we would grind, we would grind all, we would grind all day, and um, you know, motherfuckers, for for a brief period, for about two, three years, you know, what I'm saying that's what it was. You grind, grind all day, and then at night you meet up with your partners. Where I was at, you know, I I I first started grinding on '96. You know, what I'm saying '96 was very violent back there. It was a lot of niggas over there. And it was um, a lot of the players in the game came through 96 because 96 was rolling, you know. Um, Lipton was down there, Kim Servine, uh, Brim, and Fat Ran, and Ice T, and all of them, uh, Birch, uh, Ota B, and uh, Art and them. So um, it was a lot of, lot, of, lot of stuff out there, man. And, um, you know, as we got into the game, cause you know, we were, it was like a world when it hit us, we didn't know what the hell we was doing. You know what I'm saying? Once we straightened up and seen what the capabilities of, then we start getting money. You know what I'm saying? Then niggas couldn't, if a nigga was um, blowing or doing any of that shit, he couldn't fuck with the real players. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So um, we, um, we niggas, niggas start getting money and um, me and my folks, we was going all over the place, um, Frisco, um, Richmond, you know what I'm saying? We had a, we took over a spot in Richmond, um, me and my brother, and my partner, Ice-T, we went over there to, to San Francisco, was fuck with them boys out there, and we had a spot on 96, then my grandma moved to 25th. We created, that. we created a whole spot on, on 25th, that's where I'm from right now, you know what I'm saying? And 25th was like a million dollar spot, you know what I'm saying? That was like a spot, it was under, we had a lot of different races that used to come through there. But they said, you know, when we first started grinding, BGF told us that we couldn't grind. It was just, you know, cause it was some guys that was drug addicts that um, tried to intimidate us cause we, 
15, 16, 17 years old, you know? And then I got, I had a whole household of family members, youngsters, you know, and we grinding. And they tell us um, we got to pay them, but they just crackheads, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we start mopping everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We used to have the ambulance over there every day. And I heard a guy, because uh, I went to Santa Rita, I, I went to jail one time, and an uh, OG, he told me, he was, he was talk, in a bullpen talking about, um, he was talking about the feed him, and he, how they set up shop. He said, the first 30 days, first two months, we whooped ass, and then the turf was, you know, made that it was cool so we took that mentality and not only did we do that we bought a lot of guns because you could buy anything they, they would sell it they say a kitchen sink a whole kitchen a whole house you know what i'm saying so we bought all the guns and we 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 was in a mob mentality and we embraced that and we took that that life and we lived that life to, to the fullest, you know what I'm saying? Even if we would expire or die, we was living that life. We had a saying, Super Bowl Sunday on the 50-yard line, it's going to happen, you know, it's going to go down. We used to war with the police. We used to, um, we had, if you go to where I'm from, we have a big, big apartments on Foothill, and then we had some other apartments around the corner. The apartments on Foothill we use in the daytime to grind. The apartments... On 25th, we used as a nighttime spot. The late night spot was legendary over there. It was rolling, super rolling, you know what I'm saying? And when we get hit over here, we hit the back fences and come up 25th, we have apartments over there and we hide out over there. And when we get hit over here, we hit the apartments, the back fence and the back roof and we be over here, mm -hmm. you know. So we we had a little we had operation. We used to practice, um, we practice escape routes. You know, so Absolutely. our escape route went from 25th all the way, from 25th all the way to Fruitvale. We had escape routes all the way that way. So it was it was really fun <laughs> at that time as a youngster, man. You know, as a youngster, it was some fun stuff, and you know, you know, you know we. Knew the police personally, and we we were brave young men. You know what I'm saying? We put our dukes up with them. This used to be an open field. We had this house too. <laughs> so this used to be an open field, and it was hella overgrown weeds, and we'd hide big assault rifles and all a lot of guns in, in there, and um. You know, if somebody came up, it was very easy for us to run and go get one of them weapons and defend ourselves, you know. Uh, I got shot right here. Um, I got shot twice. I got shot in the shoulder, right in the middle of the street, right here I was serving. Because we used to run up in the middle of the street and serve. Yeah, yeah. That's why we start telling them to pull over and park. Mm -hmm. You know, because they'd hit your hand up and drive off or okay. or um, try to rob you. And, uh, you know, so we make a pull over and park and walk over here. So um, it, was, it was some Chinese, actually, <laughs> the Vietnamese. And um, they, 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 my partner pushed me, said, Chris, he's got a gun. My partner pushed me out the way. They were trying to shoot me in my face. Cause we used to whoop the ass. We whooped a lot of people's ass too. So I don't know what we, we probably whooped one of their folks' ass. And that was because you know if you didn't follow the rules, you get your ass whooped. I, I learned that from the OGs. So um, he pushed me out the way. They shot me in the shoulder. I was so motherfucking out of it. I went downstairs and was smoking before I went to. They told me to go to the hospital. I went to the hospital. It wasn't nothing. It's still in there. Um, one time I was um walking up here and I had just got into a fight with one of my little partners man and um, I beat him up you know I, I was kind of bullying people and I come get to this point and I got a pistol hidden over in the, across the street at that other spot where the rat ate the dope <laughs> so I'm going to get my pistol because I know they're gonna come 
and they hit the corner on me right here, ran up on me with AKs and um, bulletproof vests and ski masks. One came from right here and one came running across the street. Mm -hmm. And they, I told you big ass nigga and pulled the trigger. Nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Still got the, um, still got this mark right here from the barbed wire down there that I hit the barbed wire fence and you know, just mm -hmm. by the luck of God, the gun didn't go off and I'm still here to tell that story. Good evening, Topping Nightcast, the war against drugs in the Bay Area. At least one city is telling drug dealers and users, enough is enough. That city is Oakland. Oakland has a big drug problem, and police are fighting back by sweeping through neighborhoods and rooting out drug dealers. When Jerry Brown became the mayor, mm. they pretty much shut a lot of open-air drug markets down, um, using the riders, the different techniques that they use. Um, the feds got involved. And the feds, I remember I was sitting on that corner and hella rental cars came up the block. And I look in the rental cars, I'm talking about like a hundred rental cars hitting this block, mm. going up to my partner's on two six up there. And um, they they hit, the, that was the feds, you know. They hit, they had the tank and all that shit. Mm. And when that happened, we had to totally get out the whole town, you know, so if you was, they, they towed the town up. The first time I went to prison, actually, um, I got caught. I, I was in one of them houses in, um, in the daytime. I was on, uh, in the apartments, and I had been grinding all night. Roll, I'll never forget that. I, was, I had a Tech 9 up in there, and I had a whole bunch of dope. I had a gun. I had to, it was some clothes. It, the dope was hidden in the clothes because it's hella dirty clothes in, mm -hmm. in the closet. But the, I, the the gun was on top of the closet. So I went to sleep, my cousin and they was grinding in front of the building, police ride up, they run up the stairs and hit the fence and go to the other apartments. Wow. And the police come up there, my door, they checking the doors, my door open, they come in, I'm asleep, and they wake me up. It's an abandoned apartment, though, so we used to take over the apartment. <laughs> we used to take over all the apartment. Those two apartments, the, the owners moved. They didn't come around for about a year. So we had basically took over the apartments, and, you know, the police knew it. So they were trying to get us out of there. So, you know, I went to, I went to jail for that. I bailed out, and... um. I got out and I served her under, and that's what sent me to prison. Yeah, this is where, this is where I went to prison many times at, not just once, about three, four times. Get, I get caught with a pistol, um, get caught serving her under. I got away a lot of times. I hit, I served her under one time. I knew there was the police because I was drinking some Hennessy and I was full, but I, I, I knew I could get away. So I served the police uh, on purpose. I started this motherfucker, man, they I hit the back fences and they pulled my jacket off. I run, I jump, I fly, you know, you got the, back then, man, I got so many barbed wire, um, all kind of nicks in the brazen. So I do a Olympic somersault over the fucking fence, barbed wire. You don't care where you land, you better get to Cause they, they, they call it, nigga, we gonna beat your ass. They pull my coat off me. You know what I'm saying? They try to grab me, my coat come off. So I'm over the fence, right? Running the apartments, run up the stairs. We knew the managers of, we knew all the people in the community. Mm -hmm. So um, I run up the stairs, the manager of the apartments, he outside. I'm like, man, I'll give you $100. Let me come to your house. His door open, he let me come in. I lay behind the um, the, the couch. I'm, I'm breathing hell hard. Police, they all look up. I hear him outside to his door. You see him? And I ain't see nobody. But they, they, I'm laying down there. They, they they looking for about 30 minutes. They don't, they leave. Man, I got the mark money. I send them to the store. Go give me a big thing of Hennessy. You know what I'm saying? And that, you know, you, you get away sometimes, but when they catch you, it's cookie dough. Yeah, so when I, I got caught that time, and um, I, I, I ended up going to prison. Um, going to prison, Going to jail, period. I didn't. I never liked jail. I don't like 
that's why I changed my life. <laughs> you know, so I, I going to jail period, Santa Rita man was was um you know, Santa Rita back then. I well, went you was to back then when it was old Grace time, huh? I went to the old Santa Rita first, yeah, you know Santa what I'm saying? Ooh. Oh, my old friend, Santa Rita, when I first get on the yard at Little Greystone, because I didn't go to Big Greystone, <laughs> that was for the, the the shot callers and the BGF. I was 19 and something. So I go to old Santa Rita, right? And when I get there, they, everybody, they had them white outfits, right? Mm -hmm. I see a nigga coming towards us all red. And I'm like, why this nigga got on red? And then as he get closer, it's blood. They done beat... They used to beat them. They used to beat your ass with the mop ringers because when you get you get locked up in the the um what the the unit, it's no police in there, you know. So it's just thirty two inmates, thirty blacks, whites, Mexicans over here, and um you get locked up in there. You a snitch or you um you on some other you did you did something to somebody. They gonna mop bring the mop bringer was famous, so I was kind of scared when I first went. <laughs> I was scared as hell. Then them, them, them dope things that we was whooping, arms was this goddamn big. <laughs> I was terrified, but you know I always had heart. So um... when they see him on the street, whether they um, you know are drug addicted or not, uh, would you say this that they can do that on the street, but that same dope fiend that you beat up or you might mess around or, you know, do whatever. If you see this dude in prison, he's a whole nother dude and he just might be a shot caller. Right, right. Some of them was, you know what I'm saying? And, and they get that them drugs out their system. They're not dealing with that weakness no more. They just, they fresh again. And they'll put it on. they stab you, kill you. And and uh, rape you, you know what I'm saying? They had niggas in there. There's one nigga, Mike had young stuff in there, give him pedicures and shit. <laughs> I'm like, man, these niggas is so. Um, but but I had heart though, man. I went up in there. I started learning how to jail. You know what I'm saying? Cause yep. jailing is a skill. And uh, <laughs> niggas start. Ain't never lie. I started doing my push-ups, you know, and that's when I really, that's because I used to be kind of, you know, I, used to, I was always uh, big, but I didn't have no um, definition. So once I started doing my push-ups, I started saying, oh, and then we had the, the bag. The water bag. The water bag, man. The notorious and, water bag. The water bag is where you get a couple of trash bags, you fill it up with water, and you take a t-shirt or a shirt and you tie them two knots. And you make it into a basically a big ass dumbbell like a water like a dumbbell. That's a water bag. That's the workout. That's the workout gear. Yeah. So so experience that and um, going to court. You know what I'm saying? And, and looking at how they was doing it. I was always a revolutionary minded person though. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like these motherfucking devils. And that's the reason why I didn't go into the legitimate world because I was against. Um, r racist America back then. I was like, I'm going to get, this is my philosophy when I was this young, ignorant young youngster. We're going to get millionaires m money. We're going to um, buy hella weapons and we're going to create our own society and we're going to war against these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? And little did I know that I was sadly misled. <laughs> but you know, but it, it was, um, it was it was something that that to this day that I'm glad I thought like that because I still think in in in, in that kind of way but it's it's more of we're gonna help the community thrive like the Panthers you know what I'm saying Absolutely. we're gonna we're gonna try to help help those the less fortunate help grandma and them you know what I'm saying so yeah but pre going to going to Santa Rita then we moved from the old Santa Rita to the new Santa Rita and that was um, high tech shit. So when we moved for, to the new Santa Rita, I ended up getting out. You know what I'm saying? Then after th after that, that's when I went to prison. That that's when I caught that case. After that experience, that's when I went to prison. Going to prison, um, going to San Quentin, man, it was the scariest shit. Cause my uncles had did seven to life, and um. Quinn when it was Tamal, California, you know, Absolutely. and all my uncles, they about 
uncles I looked up to, they all did Seven and Life of Murders in Tamal, California. Absolutely. And my grandma used to get those letters from Tamal, from Uncle 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 Earl C, uh, Uncle Jack, and the Jack the Mac, and <laughs> you know, so them niggas come home, hell of buff and uh, dressed, you know, fresh. They, you know, not fresh clothes, but whatever they was wearing was pressed and clean. They had some structure about themselves. Yeah. So I'm like, this prison shit is was crazy. You know, I don't want to go there. So, um, and then I heard about. George Jackson, I always read about George Jackson, and you know, they they um, they um welded George Jackson's door shut for like five years, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Welded his door shut, so he didn't even come out of his cell for five years. You know, so, I and Jonathan Jackson, I always looked at that yeah, like, yeah. man, you know, we're gonna avenge that shit, so. Yeah. Um, for those that don't know the story about George Jackson and Jonathan Jackson, George Jackson was incarcerated, and Jonathan, George Jackson was going to court. Jonathan Jackson tried to see his brother, went into the Open Superior Court. He let off some shots. Marin County. I mean, Marin County. Yeah. Yeah. He let off some shots. They ended up killing him, but he was trying to break his brother up out of there. Yeah, they, they, they duct, duct taped the um, judge and the district attorneys duct taped the shotgun to them and got them out of the courtroom in the van. They shot up the van, killed the judge just, and everybody. You know what I'm saying? Said, we ain't gonna even do yeah, no Jonathan days. was 17 too. 17 years old. Yeah. Jonathan Jackson. Going to get his big. Soldier. Go get your bigger brother out. Pop talk about it. Let's. You know. Yeah. First, well, you know, going to prison and seeing um, a man who liked women. You know what I'm saying? Seeing all these uh, homosexuals, and then not only is they um, gay. Well, there's some tough gay motherfuckers, you know. Yeah, then they yeah. had the their stories about uh, what, what was the big guy, uh, was purple, purple passion, passion. <laughs> yeah. knock you out, and knock you out and like, sit on you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Your dick. You wake up, your motherfucking ankles around your your pants around your ankles and your dick moist. Yeah, so that 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 was that. I didn't like that. Yeah, I didn't like I didn't like that type of that type of thing. That that turned me off from prison. You know what I'm saying? It was it was laws and order and um like you had the the Kumi, BGF, Aryan Nation, the, the Mexicans, and in jail, everybody you know they go on to court. Anybody come through jail, you know they go. I'm about to get out tomorrow, but in prison, you got motherfuckers that live there. So you know if you come into somebody's house. You got to respect the laws and the rules and the established rules, or it's gonna be an all-out war on, and somebody gonna get killed. You know what I'm saying? They will kill you in, in prison, in jail. You get beat up, hit with a mop ringer, um, sock, lock in the sock or something. You know what I'm saying? Um, but and, and you 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 gonna go home? But in prison, these the nigga already got three life sentences, and you. And, and and they got knives this long, you know what I'm saying? My sentence, my first sentence was 16 months. So I did like eight months the first time I went to prison. I went from Santa Rita, came across that bridge to San Quentin, they come get you, and um, they dress you in them, um, they dress you in them jumpsuits, put you on the Grey Goose, you know what I'm saying, give you a bag lunch, and niggas say, where's the juice? They say the juice is in the apple. <laughs> they send your ass across that motherfucker water, that pretty ass. He's a pr San Quentin is actually beautiful outside San Quentin. That's Marin, man. Yeah, so you come in, you coming across the water, and that, and, and, and that motherfucker start drop popping up. Dracula's Castle, you know, it look like a goddamn horror movie. The last time I, I went, I ended up going to um, H Unit. And then I went to the camp. On the, the camp was sweet. You know what I'm saying? We had brothers going outside on the cleanup crew, bringing back Hennessy and vodka and bags of weed. And nigga, we was living over there. We had dumbbells when they couldn't have dumbbell microwave oven. You know what I'm saying? So I used to be a cameraman up at um, Main Visiting. So, I, you know, when Tukey Williams then was getting his visits, I would. Um, Make sure his his lawyer, the lady used to come visit him, have all her stuff. Make sure she Tuki was taken care of. 
I seen the Night Stalker getting his visits, um, Kerry Stainer. We used to clean up East Block. East Block used to smell like hell. So I used to buff them damn flows like a motherfucker. And um, by then, we was buff because we had a 50, 150 pound dumbbell. And we utilized that sucker to the fullest. So that's when my arms really started getting big. My chest, I, I started doing pull ups. And we was really strong. So I put on them jumpsuits and had had get my hair cut and come up to main visit and they dropping um, new phone numbers on the floor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm going back. I'm going back with ice cream and soda all down my pants. You know what I'm saying? The CEO want to check a nigga. You know she want to strip search. They said we don't strip search them down there. She said I, can I, 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 I'm like let the strip search me. But um. <laughs> I'm talking dirty to one of the CEOs one time with about some porno shit. She like, she be, the police come like, what y'all talking about? I'm like, nothing. He go, so I'm like, you know, that's what, so that's how that was. So I got comfortable. At the end, I got comfortable. One time I went to prison and my brother was my celly. Zoe was my celly. I, I ended up going to Pleasant Valley. He had been doing five years. I hadn't seen him in, um, a, Four, four, five years, and he had got stabbed in um. He had got stabbed up in um Pelican Bay in a big riot fifteen times. Mexicans um, jumped on my brother, stabbed him, but he fought their ass off. So I ended up seeing him on that joke, and we became cellies. And um, that was I ended up getting my GED. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's I went home. That was the first time I tried to change. That's when I embraced Islam. But that was the first time I tried to change. But then I went home and got into some motherfucking trouble. I think I shook the, the a big ass truck, and the, the truck was sitting on foothill for about two hours. I'm like, this truck ain't right. Mm -hmm. And I shook the truck. I'm like the police in here, we gonna kill you. They came out. They they was in there. <laughs> <laughs> I grind from '87, '86, '87, all the way to 2000. I mean, all the way to um, 1998. Mm. You know, I did that for shit for a long time, man. You know, and I eventually, in 1998, I went to prison. I embraced Islam, and I, 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 I start. You know, I was able to grow up and wise up. Mm -hmm. So with this new wisdom, and you know, I was clean. I wasn't getting high. I wasn't drinking. Mm -hmm. I was had read a lot of books. I, you know investigated, living clean. I met some good people in my life. I um, had a good support system, and I decided to change my life, but I didn't know how, so I had to go, you know, I had to bump my head for about six, seven more years. But I seen a lot of order. I seen a lot of, um, I seen I seen people clean themselves up, you know what I'm saying? Um, actually, when I got to West Block, as I got used to it, it was cool, because it was a relief from being on the streets. The streets, you know, now we glamorize the streets, but during the time that the task force was rolling and um, you, you living that life, that shit was hectic, man. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes when I would go to jail, I would be relieved that I was in jail, and especially that I didn't die, you know what I'm saying? Because every year, Oakland have a, a paper, paper, at the end of the year, they put everybody in the paper who died. I always thought I was going to be in that paper. For ever since I was 14, I always thought I was going to be in that paper. I'm 52 now. So it's a blessing that I made it this far with all my faculties and doing what I'm doing, you know what I'm saying? But I always thought I was going to get killed because it was very dangerous. And um, the police, man, you know, that situation, you always had to look over your shoulder. I used to know every headlight on the cars in the neighborhood that came around. We'll be in apartments. You got to keep your eye on the corners. You got lookouts on the corner. I'm paying people to stay on the corner every day. Um, you got robbers coming through. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, you know, I got tired of living that life, man. So sometimes when I go to jail, I would be um, relieved and I set in. So I... Last time I was in, um, one time I was in San Quentin, I wrote a book, you know, and um, I wrote this book, it was a real good book, it was a, a book about a young lady that I knew that got killed, she was 17, they shot her in the face, and um, I met her one night, and um, she, 
I hooked her up with my family, and she ended up coming up, cause she, you know what I'm saying? So when I went to jail, they were sending me money. And I'm like, okay. So they, they, then they, they write me and tell me that she, she was walked to the motel, so we stay at the, the Metro Motel or the Continental Motel. She walked to the motel after grinding, she got about 5,000 in her pocket. Niggas rock up on her, tell her to break herself. She say, fuck you, and they shoot her in the face. So I wrote the book about it. The book didn't talk about that. The book talked about how I how I met her and um, it ended up how I helped her and how she became successful. And how, you know, it, it had a lot of game in it. Mm -hmm. My ex wife threw the motherfucking book away. <laughs> <laughs> First. That was my so, first bit. How many times total you been to, to prison? About five times. Five fucking times. Yeah. Like, God yeah. Damn. yeah. So what about like, like, is it like, nigga, I need to go to prison or like you said? No, nah, I, I was, you know, when I you come home, you got two hundred dollar gate money. You know, the turf is rolling. Everybody came up. You know what I'm saying? It's not like I had a job before. You right. know what I'm saying? So I got to go back. My niggas got four zips waiting for me, you know, when I get home. You know, it, it, it's a party. Big C home. Here, it's the, the spot rolling, so I'm grinding all over again, you know? 1988 to 2000, it was nothing but grinding going on, okay. you know what I'm saying? So I didn't know nothing else, you know? And I didn't, I didn't want to do nothing else. So that's all we was doing back then. That's all we knew, you know what I'm saying? You, you get a pistol and start... Stacking up your your armor and stay on that block and hope your ass don't go to jail. Keep your keep your keep your head on the swivel. You know? I got um barbed wire scars and nicks and abrasions all over my body from jumping these fences, man. But um thank God I made it, you know, thank God I, I learned those valuable lessons. I almost got shot over here. Um I did get shit shot a couple times. I almost got killed actually when the brothers ran up on me. Um, after I had a fight with a brother, he ran up on me with an AK and pulled the trigger. Nothing happened by the grace of God. You know, things like that showed me that there was a better purpose in my life. Uh, all these things that I went through, I learned from, you know, and we used to listen. We listened to our OGs. We listened, we sucked up game back then. So I knew that we couldn't do this forever. So I had to prepare myself for something after this. What, I didn't know, but I knew that I would have to find out eventually because I couldn't do this forever or else I'd be up under the cement up out of here. The last time I went to prison, um, I never, it was never cool to me. It was just like, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't getting a lot of time. So I was going in for violations and shit like that. I wasn't catching no new cases and shit. So I just kept getting violated because I didn't want, I didn't, wasn't listening to no parole officer or probation officer or nothing. The last time I, I went, um, it was a, it was a incident where my brother had went to trial for double, um, double murder and him, his, his, um, Comrades got 200 years and 64 years, and my brother ended up getting acquitted. But while they was going to court, I seen one of their folks, one of the people that was with them, who had um, was a, became a police informant against him. So I seen him in North Oakland, and I um, he had came to my house one time, and my brother was like, man, this is my partner. Take care of him, let him sleep at your house. So he slept at my house and I cook steak and eggs and all types of shit. Big ass plate and feed this fat motherfucker. And this nigga snitched like a motherfucker. Not only did he snitch, he became a. Uh, he, uh, uh, what is it? Confident, confidential, confidential informant. informant. But he was actually overtly. Working for the police, you better not do nothing to me. You know I work for the police. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he took it as a badge of honor. Yeah, he took it as a badge of honor. I think he was kind of slow, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, so I seen him and I was like, uh, you know, I knew not to do nothing to him, so I knew not to touch him. And I was like, man, you a bitch, man. You just fucking snitch, nigga. You out there rock, walking around. He was buying a beer or something out the store. And I was buying a, a pint of Remy. And... um. 
you know, I'm like, um, you just bitch ass nigga. So he, you know, I, I was, you know, I was bullying him. I knew not to touch him though. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you know, he was he was such a punk. I slapped his money out of his hand, mm -hmm. and his money went on the ground, right? And um, I said, you bitch ass. Now I'ma tell him where you at, you know, because there was some people out yeah. that I was gonna tell, <laughs> you know. So um, I left. A week later, they come and get me. Taz, Vice, all kind of motherfuckers in suits. I'm like, damn, I'm thinking, like, who did I kill? You know? And so they get me in the car, and they like, um, I'm like, man, what did I, what did I do? He said, you know why we come because I'm like, now what did I do? He said, you ever heard of so-and-so? I'm like, oh, man, yeah. So I'm thinking, man, I'm about to go home. So when I get downtown, they put me in a homicide room. Now, this was a high-profile case that he was on. So I was tampering with, uh, fucking with this witness. And um, the district attorney at that time had a hard-on for this case, and he wasn't playing about this case. So they they came at me with some shit, man, and um, I ended up taking it because I could have beat it, too. And... Um, I could have beat it, but I took it. So I, I took it because I, I felt like, I mean, I'm hella stupid. I shouldn't even say nothing to this nigga, man. And at the time, I was, you know, I was I was kind of, I, I was tired of grinding. There was so many people that had died in 2007. You know, 2007, I considered the, that life, the game, was over with. You know what I'm saying? We had a guy named Apondo White that got killed around the corner. You know what I'm saying? And um, it was just like, I was like, the feds had hit every, everybody, took a lot of people to jail. And I was like, man, I'm, and it was so hot, man. You know, it, the rioters and all that shit. I'm like, I'm finished. So I ended up going to jail during that time, right? And um, I had met my my first wife, and her. I was um, living with her, and her family was totally different. You know what I'm saying? They had money, you know. They owned the houses that they lived in. And um, her granny was an old lady, and I used to love talking to her granny. Oh, pretty, light-skinned old country lady, too. You know what I'm saying? And she just said, just sit down for a minute, talk to me. And I talked to granny, man, and she had so much under, so much wisdom and shit. And um, I, I'm a, I've always been smart. Even though I was a street guy, I always read. I used to, the way I post up on the block, I go get me an orange juice, a newspaper, and I, I read the newspaper since the 80s, you know, it's every day, you know. So I was always book smart, always book smart. I was book smart in school. So when I go to jail, I'd be reading all these different kind of books, you know what I'm saying? So I start getting, my mind was elevating during that time. So the last time I went to jail, it was like, um, I don't belong here, you know. Mm -hmm. He was like, what the fuck am I doing up in there? So the last time I went for that shit, Michael Romer, the district attorney, he told me, he said, Chris, you might could, because I used to threaten to fuck the police up too. I used to be like, nigga, we could, if we was, if we was like this, I'd beat your motherfucking ass. You know what I'm saying? But Mike, Michael Romer was like, listen, you might could fight, Chris. But I fight a lot from here. And I was like, this motherfucker got me too. <laughs> he whooping my ass. So I end up, I I, I had I, I got three years that time. Because I was on probation too. And they gave me um, terrorist threats with, um, which the nigga said I robbed him when I, for $5. You know what I'm saying? So they said I robbed him, threatened the witness, terrorist threats. And they said it was a strike. I had a fucked up public defender because my money was funny. You know what I'm saying? And I end up going to um, going to prison again. Um, that time, I went, you know, while I was there, man, I had books piled up because I told myself, I'm not doing this shit no more. You know what I'm saying? I had just met my, my girl. She, they had my back. She made sure all my books was taken care of. All Everything that I needed, I was taken care of this time. You know what I'm saying? So I was living a whole different life already. I was trying to change. I just didn't know how, you know? So um, I had books. I'm talking about the books 
not Dutch, not Donald Goins. I wasn't reading that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'd already written my own book. You know, so um, that shit. I don't want to hear nothing about that. Yeah. All that stuff. I lived that life. You know what I'm saying? We actually did so much shit. You know what I'm saying? That I, I, I can't even get it out. So I was reading. Um, Psycho Cybernetics by Matthew Maltz, How to Win Friends and Influence People, um, The 48 Laws of Power, um, Before the Mayflower, um, The ISIS Papers, all those those oh, gems, all them good books, I had them all, and they were sending me good stuff. My cousin sent me a book called Visions for Black Men. It was um, by Naeem Akbar. talked about the male, the boy, which you born, the male, you born with a, a penis, the boy, boy, no responsibility, little boy, and the man. And I re read that book, and I, I asked myself, which one is you, Chris? And I was like, I was like, I was like 30. I was like, man, I'm the boy. You know, I ain't even got no motherfucking driver's license. <laughs> I ain't got shit. I ain't got no job. I can't do nothing. I'm in jail. I'm a fucking boy. You know, so I held a mirror up to myself, and I was like, man, nigga, you gonna tell yourself the truth, nigga. We gonna be truthful with yourself. I got a lot of shit to fix within myself, so that's why I started stacking them books up, man. I started reading them books. I read the Bible. I read the Torah. I read the Quran. I'm talking about the whole books. You know what I'm saying? That's all I used to do is read, read, read. I used to put toilet paper in my ear. So I, and I practiced not saying a word to nobody um, the whole day. You know what I'm saying? I practiced discipline. You know what I'm saying? I had my exercise program. I was slapping the shit out of people. <laughs> and was, Noise check, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I was mad the motherfucker. But I was taking care of people too. I made it. They told me, Chris, you made this motherfucker into a, um, a masjid. Because I start... Um, I start, um, you know, after I start reading the, the Bible, the Torah, and the Quran, that's how I start getting softer. You know what I'm saying? I start, I embrace Islam. I was a, I was a good Christian at first. I was trying to be a good Christian, learn all I could learn about Jesus, and the Bible led me to Islam. You know, so I, I I'm spiritual. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I always um, been God fearing. I was. I, I don't want to ask God for nothing. I want to thank him for, um, so the prayers five times a day, keeping me, um, God conscious and conscious because I need that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, I'm hard headed. You know what I'm saying? I got to stay grounded. If I fall off a little bit, shit, I'm, anything could happen. So, um, the, the five prayers, um, the voodoo, um, and, um, the concept that there's no, there's one God, no man is God, God is one and he, and, um, he's separate from his creation mm -hmm. that, you know, that, that, that appealed to me, you know, and it, it was just um, a, a higher spiritual thing and we still love Jesus. So I was like, okay, as long as you love because that's what my mama, you know, she named me Christ Christian, <laughs> you know, so my mom, my mama named Mary, and my name Chris, I'm Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, did. Well, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Where was you when I needed you, my yeah, mama? I so I see. 15, man. Right, so, so I, you know, I was always spiritual, man, so I, I incorporated, incorporated that in my, um, you know, we all been traumatized in this in this life on this in this Absolutely. in this country. I incorporate that in my um cleaning myself up, you know, getting myself together. I use that, I use the knowledge from the books, and I use the holding myself to the truth, holding a mirror to myself. So I can't lie to myself. You know what I'm saying? What am I doing in here? Am I that stupid where I got to keep coming back and forth? to this motherfucking jail. I can't do nothing else. And so that last time I went, man, the the the, the COs, I was working in the um, main visiting and the lieutenant, he was like, Chris, they used to like me. You know what I'm saying? So they used to, they used to look out for me. They tried to send me to the, um, 
firehouse. Um, they tried to send me to, to work in the houses off campus at the gym. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I only had like two, three more months. So I'm like, man, I don't want to, I'm just going to stay right here. Yeah. You know, so um, they like me. Uh, my girl come home, come up and visit me. She got crab and steak, and they take a piece of my steak to tell tell hall we took a piece of steak. <laughs> so um, it was cool, you know, because that, by that time, man, we had start making a um, pre-release program for the people on the ranch. Okay. Me and my partner, we 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 took over the library and we just was stuck. We was making a pre-release program, and I found out. I was researching all the jobs that I can get once I got home with these felonies. So um, they t the Lieutenant Kramer told me, he said, um, he stopped me one time, I'm sweeping, yes, boss, <laughs> you know, like a goddamn slave. And, <laughs> and he say, um, oh, he said, man, you clean them fucking bathrooms up immaculate, man, you keep this place real clean. He said, why you can't get a job on the street? And I looked at him, and I was like, I don't know what to fucking say. You know what I'm saying? So that fucked me up right there. Oh, right? I'm like, why? I couldn't get no goddamn job. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I always look at well, it's racism, but I never really went and tried to get no motherfucking job. You know, <laughs> but I always say they're racist. They racist. So that, that time I got out, mother-in-law came and got me. Me and my girl got married, big ass wedding, about 26 days after I got out. The imam from prison came and officiated over the wedding. We had a big ass wedding right around the corner up at the park on 35th. And um, I was cleaning the motherfucker. Um, her mom gave us a house, um, gave us one of the house. The house was next door to Granny House. We got that house, so we got both houses. And they were nice houses in North Oakland. So, um, I was living, my girl had bought me like 20 fits, leather pea coats, and um, I got a, I got a Volvo, black Volvo when I came home. Oh, Moms yeah. come get me in the bins, we go across the Golden Gate, and I, I got all this information that I've been teaching these youngsters in our prison pre-release class that we got approved by the CEO, by the um, warden to do, so, I, I got Islam in me, you know what I'm saying? I got, got some Muslim brothers. Um, the, the grind is over with, you know what I'm saying? That's, there's no way going back that direction. It is, it's still going on, you know, but no way going back in that direction. The game is just like dope, man. If you, if you put yourself in that same position in that environment, you're gonna relapse. So I had to change everything about myself. I had to be broke. I had to learn how to budget my money. I had to learn how to um, not um, get flustered because I was going through hard times. I had to embrace them hard times because that was what, 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 what changed me. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, and uh, basically what I did different was just I, I persevered. I stood strong and I just changed my mind, man. I changed my mind. I said, I can't go to these places no more. I went and got a job. I went and got a, a, a menial job, a little job, and that those little jobs, I took baby steps. Those I took baby steps, baby steps, baby. Got my ID, got my license, um, went to school, uh, worked on getting a degree, and after I took so many baby steps, I look back, I took a huge leap. You know what I'm saying? So that's what that's basically what I did. So I get out. I, I go stumble around for a while, trying to get. I'm working off Craigslist. I'm um, throwing the newspaper at the 100-year anniversary for the um, earthquake in San Francisco, the Chronicle. Get you, my niggas, um, E and T, they balling. You know what I'm saying? They doing all kind of shit. They getting money still. I'm talking about big money too, hundreds of thousands. And they want me to fuck with them. I'm like, I ain't fuck with you niggas, man. And they they um, called me one time. They're like, Chris, man, what you doing, man? Six in the morning. I'm I'm like. Chronicle, get your Chronicle. It's a hundred year anniversary of selling newspapers. San Francisco, they pay a nigga about sixty dollars, you know, for the moment. But that's a job, man. I'm going back home to my family. I ain't fucking with you guys. So, um, I I, I studied for tests. 
I mean, interviews that, um, I mean, I fucked up a lot trying to get a job. I just couldn't get no job. I got so frustrated. One time I was in San Francisco, man. I, um, I smoked some weed before the interview. I studied the, the whole company before this interview. And I had an inside line into the, the job. Yeah, 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 yeah. I smoked a joint. So before I went to the interview, and man, I was stuck. I didn't, I didn't, I forgot every fucking thing. <laughs> so I was well dressed man coming out that interview, kicking over garbage cans, screaming and hollering, cussing, <laughs> walking down on Larkin Street in San Francisco. Mad a motherfucker, man. I knew I fucked that interview up. So I went to my father used to say, my stepfather used to say, man, you got to just go to hella interviews so you could learn the language and learn the shit. So I just started going, I, to, I applying for shit I knew I couldn't even get, you know? And then so I started learning. Once I started learning, I started learning. Then I got into this training with this um, nonprofit called CalPEP. And that's one of the jobs that I knew that I could do, work with people with HIV. So, um, I became a, a case manager. First, I started off as an outreach worker. They, they, they was, that was like my one of the first jobs that really fucked with me. They, they hired me, you know, and it was a good job. They paid me like seventeen dollars an hour. I was an outreach worker, and um, we drive a mobile van around. We do HIV testing, and um, I eventually became a case manager and client navigator, where I was working with the positives and I would navigate them into care. Uh, I did that for 10 years. I navigate them into care and um, um, I helped a lot of people change their lives. I gave a lot of people the HIV diagnosis. They, they, I gave a lot of people um, um, a lot of, you know, I started going to the um, PAC meetings, speaking and um, talking to, we had, they had different programs in the, in the, in the job. So I started working on programs that was geared towards the formerly incarcerated, and I helped a lot of guys get get on get on point. Um, after that, I started learning how to work. I started doing all kind of stuff. I got me a truck. Started doing my own little business. Um, you know, I eventually got out of that, and and uh, I, 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 I like right now, man. I got like two, three jobs. Um, I, I get paid a, a good good wage and um i got my records expunged after all that just got my paper records expunged um they didn't expunge that gun though so i'm mad about that but um i got my records expunged um i work for i work for a company that's up under google uh, the alphabet right now um all at work i don't fuck with nothing but squares you know so you know, it took a lot for me to get there, man. I, the most, I, you know, I had to, I had to really be honest with myself. I had to stop, st stop. I had to stop um, trying to follow the Joneses. You know what I'm saying? I had to step outside of the box. Like when my partners in, they called me, like, Chris, man, you really have changed. You know, um, yeah, nigga, I have changed. I'm not 15 no more. I'm shit 45 you know i can't do that shit no more man. i ain't trying to go to jail you know i look around the jail you got some of the worst motherfuckers in there you know this nigga didn't kill his his baby or this nigga didn't uh, rape somebody or this motherfucker you know a lot of dudes doing that emotional killing you know what i'm yeah. saying they deal it, 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 because of immaturity they don't know how to deal with certain situations so you know, it's a lot of that going on in our community. That's why we got, you know, tonight somebody going to get gunned down for, for nothing, probably. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to be a part of that no more. You know what I'm saying? I want to be a part of, um, I want to be a, looked up as a man. I didn't want to be looked at as a nigga that pull your pants up um, lesser than, you know what I'm saying? I want the motherfucker to respect me. And when you look at me, you're going to respect me and you're going to respect the next person that come behind me because the the image that you I'm going to give you is going to awaken you that everybody is not stupid. You know what I'm saying? And I understand that a lot of us have been traumatized by um, what's going on in this country for all these years. But it comes a time when we got to, you know, we got to step our game up, man. And we got to... Um, 
we got to be examples. We got to be fathers, you know what I'm saying? We got to be Absolutely. we got to be the ones who um who push the envelope and, and push us forward, you know? So, that's what I want to be before I, before before I go up out of here, you know what I'm saying? I'll be content knowing that I did my best, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm glad I made it out of that shit though. Just talking about that right now, I was a whole different person back then. You know, they just called me. You know, Debo just died. I used to do. Yeah. I used to be like Debo. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I know. I know. I know some of you. I know some of the. Uh, I know some of the other brothers from around your hood. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know like the little brother. It's a little brother named Bird. A little Bird with the Carter block. You know, yeah. He coming trying to do his thing. I remember brothers like Piazza from over there. I remember yeah. brothers like uh, shit Tito. You know what I mean? I remember a lot of brothers. Thomas Butler. Thomas Butler. That's my brother, man. We had a fight, man. We, the, the rumble in the jungle. Uh, that's my that, dude, man. That's my dog, man. That's we we come from like man. this, though. We, we that's my brother right there. Yeah, I love 100, him. Man, mm. I was I was behind the walls with that brother, man. Mm. One of my brothers as well. So uh, yeah. And so, what would you today? You know, like I say you you old Oakland man. It was fun. Everything was good. Same thing like prison. You know, you was doing short stints, so you didn't you didn't get the whole wham. They didn't hit you with the whole you know kid caboodle. So you you went back a few times, and then uh, you know some people they do the long stints and they don't go back no more. Uh, what could you tell right now? Because a lot of brothers, you know, they don't want to listen or whatever. But what could you say to anybody right now? To, to any of the youngsters that they listening right now that's watching, what would you tell them, man, about their life, no matter where they at in it right now? What would you tell them in order to keep them encouraged? Yeah, you gonna get, God willing, you're going to get older. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to waste your time on this earth being stuck in one place, man. You want to learn as much, get as much data and information in your mind and uh, get as much experience as you as you can, you know, just stand in one place. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, a like a little plant. If you put it in a little vase, it's not gonna grow that big. You know what I'm saying? But you put it in the big ass pot, it might grow into a tree. You know what I'm saying? So you know, oh, broaden your horizons, man. Look around, just you know, get out your environments and go see other things, and um, give yourself some time to live. You know. Live a little, cause as you as you get older, you're gonna gain more understanding and more wisdom, and you're gonna think different. I thought I was an idiot at, at 14, 15, making those decisions. As a 50 year old man, I can't make 14, 15 year old decisions. You know what I'm saying? I had to update my data. You know, I had to put new um, goals and 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 um, new new things to aspire to in my life at this age. I gotta take care of my kids, you know what I'm saying? I don't want my kids to go through the things that I went through, you know what I'm saying? So I would encourage you just to be honest with yourself, you know what I'm saying? Don't be a follower, you know what I'm saying? Enjoy this gift of life that you got and try to live it to the fullest, and, but you know, live it in, in the parameters of, uh, of a structure. Have some structure about yourself because if you chaotic, you know what I'm saying? Chaos, the devil is the author of chaos. There's no order, there's chaos. You know what I'm saying? Put some order in your life, man. You know what I'm saying? Go get go get an education. You know what I'm saying? Go 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 work. Go work. Go to go get a job. You know what I'm saying? It might you might start off with a, a, a low paying job, but now you got some experience. You know what I'm saying? Go. Get get another job after that job. Just keep growing. Keep growing. Don't put just your, keep yourself in that little ass pot and get shot. <laughs> man, that. Well, I want to thank you for coming through, Big C. We just took a ride through the dubs, man. Thank you for spending the lap with your boy. Y'all remember it's Jerry Law, man. And this is Gate Money. Peace and blessings. Yeah, man. All my little cousins. They grew. They came through here. Everybody was getting money right here, man. This this was the spot right here. 25th foot here. It was so funny listening to your story and listening to you because what it's going to do is the people that's watching is going to wake them up because we all did the same thing. So uh, right now, you know, I, I, I live a healthy life, man. I don't drink or smoke. 
I don't do crime. Um, I had a rap group called Next of Kin. We made an album in 96 um, called Ghetto Poetry. And I said, but the tr because the truth would be good as a confession to have me up in San Quentin stressing. <laughs>